Nitrogen cycle is a process by which waste materials from the fish are turned into inorganic waste. Okay? It typically starts with ammonia. Fish, because of osmotic pressures, are constantly peeing. Um, and as a result, ammonia builds up in a tank. Ammonia is the most toxic thing in your entire tank to fish. Ammonia burns gills, stops fish's ability to breathe, um, and ultimately irritates their skin, all sorts of fun, ultimately will take them out. If ammonia levels get too high, everything in your tank will die. There's two good things about ammonia, though. Um, one is it's very easy to see. The other is it's very easy to smell when it gets going. It smells like cat pee. When you set up a tank, it's going to take about four weeks to get around this cycle. The cycle is three parts long. Okay, there's an ammonia portion, that's the first portion. Fish pee ammonia, ammonia gets into the water, ammonia builds up. There's a bacteria that actually eats ammonia. Fish typically can pee ammonia faster than the, ammonia, than the bacteria can build up. Once, ammonia, or once bacteria get to a certain level, they do catch up though, and that goes away. What happens is you get an ammonia level that goes up, then the ammonia level comes down. Um, that takes typically about a week to a week and a half um, if you're monitoring it. It's, it's not a long process, seven to ten days is usually how long it takes. Unfortunately, that strain of ammonia has to use the bathroom just like anything else, and uh, what they do is they, their waste material is something called nitrites. Nitrites are also toxic to fish. During that phase, your tank, if it was cloudy, will clear up. It will look nice, but your fish will act a little strange. They'll be itchy, they'll itch on rocks a lot, people have all seen that. Um, they might hang out at the bottom or conversely at the top um, more than anything else when normally you'd see them swimming all around the tank. It irritates their skin, it makes them uncomfortable. In high enough doses, again, gills are very sensitive to things, it can, it can screw up gills and you have fish death, death as a result. That is also about a 7 to 10 day process. Second bacteria that you will be using will eat that. It will eat nitrites and it will produce something called nitrates. Nitrates is least harmful to fish. It can be in very high um, doses in a fish tank without hurting fish. It can be too high, but typically um, nitrates are easy to deal with. Water change will deal with them completely. Okay, um, the third chemical reaction that's going on in the tank is the pH changes. All of these things we're talking about, especially ammonia, it's acidic. So it's going to lower the pH. You lower the pH too much, fish eggs are guarded from, um, from uh, acid by their shells. If you put too much acid into uh, anything, um, you will dissolve those shells and get bad chemicals in. So, here's the easiest way to do this. Um, you're going to use a filter. Filter is going to be varying sizes depending on the size of your tank. Bigger the tank, bigger the filter. I'm not going to actually open these, but add rocks to the bottom of the tank. Not that big a deal. Bacteria adhere to all surfaces in your tank. The bacteria that we're going to provide, which is this bacteria bottle, lovely addition to the world of uh, fish tanks. Um, will adhere to every surface in here. They're small enough, you'll never see them. You don't have to worry about them. They will not hurt a cut. They will not hurt you. You can drink the water and not have any problems whatsoever. But what they do do is create this cycle will take exactly four weeks. Um, and so in a, in a normal temperature tank, we can do this cycle in exactly four weeks. Now, once the cycle is established, we can mess with the water temperature all we want. But what I'm going to recommend to you guys if you do not have this established is that we establish this tank, and I would like to see everyone here establish this tank a minimum of four weeks before these eggs are showing up. Okay, because if we do that, then we don't have to worry about when the eggs go in, everything will be ready for them. There's no, oh my god, something's wrong because I set this tank up three days before the eggs showed up. Okay, if we do that, we will create an environment for them, a mini ecosystem, if you will, that will sustain their life once they come out. Okay? Um, so, we're going to put our rocks in, we're going to put our filter on, we're going to get it, the tank full, we're going to get everything running. That's super important, make sure it all works, get it running. We are going to add an air stone, which is also not on your guys' list, but I think it's very important. We've got our tank, we've got our filter, we've got our air stone, we've got our rocks in. For goldfish, we're done. Okay, all we have to do is, is put some goldfish in. Now, I will provide, at my stores, I will provide goldfish to every person here. 
who sets these tanks up. You just go in, they will give you the appropriate amount of goldfish, no charge, no problem. When you are done, you're going to bring them back. A month from now, you just scoop them up and bring them back. When your trout comes, goldfish will eat your trout eggs, so don't leave them in there. So, but they are very useful fish to this cycle. They're, the reason that I use them is mostly because they live through it. They're a carp species. They, they're hardy, as witnessed by <laughs> sub-zero temperatures and living. Um, they live through just about anything. And so we use them as, I, I call them the only fish with rent. Uh, in the stores. And we do it, and it works great. So I'm going to encourage all of you to get this tank set up, get it rolling, and get your goldfish in it as soon as possible. One of the things that we will give you guys also is a bottle of stability. Stability is your bacteria. The bottle, the day you put the fish in, the other half of the bottle, a week later. Okay. Once that's going, you're good. All you need to do now is feed your goldfish. This is good for a month, besides feeding. There's no water changes, there's no nothing. Water changes make the process take longer. Anyone who's ever done this at home, who started out doing, oh, it's cloudy water, i got to do a water change. Oh, you, you, you've probably been there. I know someone's been there. <laughs> it just makes it take longer, okay? It, it, it prolongs this process. So just leave it be. And during the four weeks, if you guys want to have the water tested and watch the three cycles go, you're welcome to take a sample of water into any of my stores. They will do your water testing for absolutely free. Okay, you can also do it yourself. I am going to try to get everyone these. These are little test kits that you attach to the front of the tanks. Um, one is a pH test kit, one is an ammonia test kit. Those are the most commonly tested for things in the beginning of a tank's life. These are fairly long lasting, which is I can alter the pH in this in 20 minutes um, by messing with it. Um, a big tank, I could never do that. Um, so, anyways, the biggest, the biggest you can. Anyway, so let's fast forward uh, uh, four weeks later. The tank itself should, at this point, be cloudy. The water should be clean. Everything should be looking good. Fish should be healthy. Oh, I should back up a step and say during this four, the first four weeks, some of your goldfish might die. It's totally normal. Do not try to add more fish once you've started. Two weeks into this cycle, chemicals are wacky. If you throw a fish in in the middle of that, you'll kill it for sure. Um, the only reason the fish that are in there are alive is because they've gotten used to this increase in, in chemicals slowly over the course of that two weeks. That they've been. Okay, so four weeks later, um, to the tank, all we're going to do is pull the goldfish out. Now we have to get the tank ready for the fry that you're going to be, or the eggs that you're going to be putting in there. So now we have to add, we have to cool the water down. Um, it's my understanding that Lahontan cutthroat trout should be 50 to 55 degrees. Anyone using a chiller like this will simply set this at the temperature they want. I would probably go right in between that, 52 to 53 degrees. These kind of chillers uh, are chillers and heaters. They keep water within one degree. Um, so you, do, you will be picking a temperature with this. Tank's set, tank's going, nothing's changing about that. All we're going to do is add the lines to a chiller to make the water cold. Now, if you put your filter on one side like this, you're going to have water be coming down, bouncing, and kind of going that way. Um, but for a setup like this, where the chiller could sit next to this, um, this is a, a perfectly fine pump. So, we've got one side that's going to hook up to this little pump, and you're going to cut the tubes to whatever you think is the appropriate size. But let's say we, you know, we have this little pump sitting right here that's putting water into this thing. We're going to have this blowing water back into the tank that's going to be cooled. Okay, the idea is make the water do this. If it's over here, fine. You know, if it's over here, put it in the back. Just envision current going around this tank and put this out pump wherever you need to to keep that water flowing in the circle. A couple things that it says, setting up, disinfect all equipment, please don't use bleach. So just use hot water. If you feel the need to use some kind of cleaning agent, use vinegar. Hot water will kill everything that's a problem, right? So just, just use water if you have to. Cleaning the water, 25% is what you change at, at any given time. If you have to move to 50%, it means that something catastrophic is happening. Any more than any more than 25% of the water, you are starting to potentially disrupt this entire ecosystem that you're building. Okay, so if you're getting to 50% of that water having to be changed, call me, please. 
because uh, something's going dramatically wrong. So 25% should be that number. If you need to clean the water, and you probably will, you can use a gravel vacuum. A gravel vacuum is a nifty little device that attaches together. You use a bucket off to the side, you start a siphon, and what you do is you literally go like this into the gravel. Okay? What you're doing by that is you're taking the stuff that you are dislodging, and it's being sucked out. A small one like this is great because you can watch for your little fish, because um, you're going to be kind of hovering in and around these little guys, and you're going to have to be watching for them. The idea behind setting this up correctly is, is we won't be changing water. We won't be messing with this. You know, an ideally set up tank that's been going for a little while, <coughs> I haven't changed the water in one of my tanks in three years. <coughs> okay? Um, all I do is add water for evaporative loss. And that's it. And I haven't touched it.